At a remote space center in Russia's far east, the bizarre new world order got even weirder on Wednesday. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and Russian President Vladimir Putin becoming allies against the West. We are certain that the Russian people and its military will emerge victorious in the fight to punish the evil forces that ambitiously pursue hegemony and expansion. Putin and Kim vowing stronger ties, a long-standing strategic relationship, joining forces to find a way around crippling UN sanctions, leaving the US and the West with even less leverage. The Putin-Kim summit packed with made-for-TV moments, just like Kim's first summit in Singapore with former President Trump. A lavish state dinner lasting more than five hours, twice as long as Trump's. Putin and Kim dining on delicacies like crab dumplings, fish soup, and sorbet. Kim's sister, Kim Yo-jong, often seen by his side. The second most powerful person in North Korea attending to every detail. An aide even wiping down Kim's chair before he sits. Putin even showed off his Russian presidential limousine. Kim himself has been seen driving around in a million-dollar Mercedes back home. Trump gave Kim a similar tour of his presidential limo, The Beast. Something new in 2023? For the first time ever, North Korea launched two short-range ballistic missiles while the Supreme Leader was out of the country. An unexpected plot twist. And one step closer to Kim's goal of becoming a full-fledged nuclear power. In the front line of anti-imperialism and independence, I will always be standing with Russia. I'm using this opportunity to make it clear. Back in 2018, Kim and Trump were discussing a deal to denuclearize North Korea. Can you invite Chairman Kim to the White House? Absolutely, I will. Giving up nukes to build beachfront condos. How bad is that, right? It's great. But it wasn't meant to be. Five years later, Kim and Putin are flipping the script. Denuclearization is dead. The U.S. cast aside for a new partnership with the Russian military. 